Thank you, Mike. Good morning. My name is Mihai. Uh, I work for a company called Fresh Forecast. Uh, we do forecasting in fruit and veg. And as part of that, we often uh, make uh, external data available to our customers uh, to subscribe to. So um, that's what I'll, I'll be showing you today. Um, I'll be covering uh, quite a large uh, chunk of data. So we've, we've done a research over 200 countries, uh, historical data going back to, 20, uh, to year 2000 and we've added forecasts uh, forward um, until 2020, and this is uh, production, export, import, and consumption. And I just want to acknowledge my colleagues who have done the work, Michele Dallorio and our virtual assistant Saga, um, and of course the data sources that uh, sit behind this. I can't print these on every slide, so here they are at the beginning, all the data sources that you'll see. So I've got a couple of slides just to show you the, the top line numbers, and then we'll dive into the analytics. So first of all, the, uh, the, the total production, we're looking at 13.4 million tons of berries produced last year worldwide. Right. So this is, we're covering more than 99% of the, uh, the global production uh, with these 200 countries. Uh, this is projected to grow to 15.4. Um, out of that, a relatively small proportion is uh, being traded internationally, uh, but that part is growing faster. Diving into the largest product, more than 70% of berries produced worldwide are strawberries. Um, the smallest percentage uh, of export among all berries is in strawberries. Um, and that part you know, is 1 million tons a year, growing at 2.1x uh, since 2000. Um, raspberry and blackberry, so for this study, uh, we've, we've had to aggregate them in our monthly data, you'll see them separate. Uh, but for this study, raspberry and blackberry together, 1.3 million tons last year. Um, Really good growth in, in production, but very, very fast growth in export. Again, as Cindy was mentioning, uh, this is coming from a small base. Um, and finally, blueberries, uh, 1.7 million production, uh, with uh, half a million tons uh, exporting, which is again, a very strong growth versus uh, 2000. And this is forecast to increase. Now, we'll go through the details of all of these, so we'll now go into the analytics, uh, and we'll go one by one. But what I want to tell you is that um, what you're about to see, so all of that presentation with all the live data behind that, we'll make that available to everyone in this room. Right? So take pictures if you want, but we'll, uh, we'll show you how to, uh, to get access to that data, okay, for free. Um, so these are the, um, sorry, could you move the mouse a bit? Um, fine, cool. Thanks. Uh, so these are um, th these are the production numbers since year 2000. You can see steady growth, uh, worldwide production, uh, including the uh, forecast all the way to 2020. And you can see on the left hand side, uh, strawberry was the largest product. Now let's look at the total market. And before we dive into individual products, let's look at continents. Now the the largest producer of berries in the world is Asia. All right. Um, and this, you know, it is the largest continent, it is the largest consumer of berries. Uh, but it is shocking to see just how much, uh, how, uh, you know, how much volume is being produced there. And just to put things into context, why is this volume so large, almost invisible to us in, in the West? If you see at the top, at the top you see production, 2017 versus 16, and in the bottom chart you see uh, exports. So you see, Asia doesn't really export produce, uh, but they do produce more than anyone else. If we move into why that happens, so this is a, 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 this is a consumption uh, chart, and we see that this is a share chart. If you, if you notice in the options, there's a percentage share. So Europe, from uh, the number one position in terms of the world's consumption of berries, has now moved to number three, as Asia and North America uh, move up. Uh, in the next slide, we'll, I want to, to show you the, the population, just to put things into perspective. Uh, the time scale is different on this chart. This is the population by continent. So it's easy to see why Asia is so big. More than half the people in the world live there. And, and not just that, compound the population size and population growth with the growth in, in productivity. And you see that the yellow line, the GDP, uh, really um, shoots ahead of everyone else. So, uh, the, the largest GDP contributor of the world is now Asia and has been for a few years. So that is really uh, stimulating 
stimulating consumption of uh, premium fruit like berries. Now let's dive into uh, the products one by one. So we'll start with the largest one, which is strawberries, um, and we dive straight into production. And this might be a surprising number. So if you see China, uh, almost three times the size of the US in terms of strawberry production. All right. And this has been going on for many years. Um, and then China and US may be produced from local consumption. Uh, what we need to look at, so in, in terms of international trade, we'll look at the, the group, the next four countries, Mexico, Egypt, Turkey, and Spain, which are the main contributors to, to exports. So let's dive into that now. So these are the, this is the evolution of those four countries. Spain used to be the number one uh, producer in the world, uh, plateaued for a while and then started growing again. Uh, phenomenal growth in Mexico, in Egypt, and Turkey. Uh, Spain is now the fourth producer in this group, uh, but it continues to be the number one exporter. So in terms of export, Spain still retains the lion's share there, uh, but Mexico is gaining fast. Um, <clears throat> in terms of imports, uh, we're still into strawberries. We can see steady growth, uh, slowing down a bit, you can see a, a peak in, uh, in 2012 as due to uh, the US, um, but it's you know steady great growth but plateauing uh, and relatively small growth projected uh, to 2020. I'm moving to the, the fastest growing, uh, at least in, in export, the fastest growing uh, category. Uh, we see uh, raspberries and, and blackberries. The, the main producer is Mexico, followed by US, Russia, Poland, and we have to mention Serbia, a country way above their weight, with you know relatively you know a small country producing uh, at a comparable level with, with Poland. Um, now, raspberry and blackberry. If you look at the evolution of the of the key uh, production countries, uh, you can see again the, the tremendous growth in Mexico, um, followed by U.S., followed by by Russia and Poland. Switch over to export, and we see Mexico shooting. You know, ah, but that is phenomenal growth. Right? So based on their, their production growth and the, uh, the, the high percentage of their production that goes to export, you see this, uh, uh, this phenomenal growth in, uh, in export. Of course, uh, that, this is linked to the, the appetite for, for raspberries and blackberries uh, in their main uh, destination, which is uh, US. Right? So this is taking it from the other side. We're looking at imports now of raspberries and uh, blackberries. And this is US. More than 40% of the import of raspberries and blackberries go to the US, followed by Canada. Germany is really uh, big uh, in that in uh, the, the first European market, um, and then uh, followed, that's followed by the UK. So that's just to put raspberries and blackberries on, on the map. Uh, uh, just to touch on on, uh, on the US, one last point there. You can see the phenomenal growth in uh, in uh, in the US consumption. So. If you have questions at the end, we can switch between production, export, import, and you can see how actually there they started producing a lot, they started exporting, but then consum local consumption grew so much that they stopped exporting. The exports went down significantly, and then their imports went up. Um, and I'll finally, let's look at, at, um, at blueberries. The largest producer in the world, in the US, followed by Canada. Uh, and Chile, but then we see a lot of growth coming from uh, from Peru and, uh, and Mexico. So let's look at uh, at that growth. So if we see the the European the uh, main exporters, we see the green line is Chile, uh, phenomenal growth. But look at Peru, uh, look at Mexico at the bottom. This is very very fast percentage growth, and soon to uh, uh, to fill some some gaps that I'm going to talk about. So if you look at Chile, massive export, the number one source of, of uh, blueberries traded internationally. Uh, a lot of it goes to the US, and the US still absorbs a lot of the international capacity of, of blueberries. Uh, but look at the uh, China line at the bottom. Look at the, the percentage growth in that line, and uh, it follow that trend a few years forward. That's relevant because China offers better prices than the US. It's got phenomenal growth, and Chile is shifting more and more of their volumes towards China. And that has an impact on the, the timing uh, that, that only Chile can, can fill right, on, the, on the production calendar at the moment. So if you look at that, so let's, now we're looking at US imports, and at the bottom we see months. So we just, we're looking at the import calendar. 
Um, and you know, green light. Uh, we we look at Chile on the green light. We see that in January, February is is filled by by Chile. Um, and then we look at the purple line. Mexico fills the the next gap, uh, followed by uh, by Canada. And then at the end of the year, we have a mix of, of Peru, Argentina, and then Chile again. So if you imagine the pressure on the green line that will come from 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 China essentially, from uh, how much China is going to absorb, uh, that will that will make that will create a gap in January, February. And it's a similar similar situation in Europe. So these are the um, European. This is the European import calendar. Um, again, Chile fills the same uh, calendar gap, and then it's different sources, obviously, in the uh, in Europe, so Spain. Uh, Poland and, uh, and so on. So this uh, this is an important one because, uh, and I'll, I'll finish with this, uh, because this is the, the relative uh, price, this is the comparison between the import prices uh, in, uh, in the main continent. So you look at Asia, it is coming down a bit, and then again, Sidney uh, touched on this, uh, as the market matures and some of the products they become commoditized, but there's still a significant gap, and it's significant enough uh, for Chile to, to want to ship their goods there. So, potentially an opportunity for exporters who can fill the January February gap in uh, Europe and the States. Now, if we can switch back to PowerPoint, I've tried to cover the main highlights. Obviously, there's, uh, uh, there's so much information that we cannot cover that um, what uh, everyone in the room is, is keen to, to see. But you can have access to the, to the full data set uh, this is completely interactive. Just send an email to member at freshforecast.com, quoting GBC 2018, and you'll uh, uh, we'll set up a, in, in a couple of days, you'll receive a link, and you can get free access to all this data. All right? I hope that has been useful. Enjoy the day. I'm looking forward to that. And uh, thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, Mike. Please just take a seat. Cindy, if you could uh, rejoin us on the stage. Okay. That's